there are uh, mainly three molecular markers which should be routinely assessed in uh, patients with gliomas. Um, one very important one is MGMT. There's a gene uh, which regulates the protein expression um, uh, and MGMT promote the methylation status. That's the, the marker you should test for in glioblastoma patients and especially those above the age of about 65 to 70. So the elderly population of glioblastomas because it tells you uh, what therapy you should use. Either go for chemotherapy alone or radiotherapy, at least in patients who are not fit enough for uh, combined radiochemotherapy. Another very important marker is IDH. Uh, that's a gene mutation, IDH mutation. It should also be assessed, in my opinion, in all uh, glioma patients. It gives you information to help you with differential diagnosis in some cases and it also carries very important prognostic information. So patients with the IDH mutation do a lot better than patients without the mutation. The third one is a 1P90Q deletion status. This is important to assess in gliomas, especially if there's clear cell histology, so if, uh, uh, if it's an oligodendroglial tumor. And this marker tells you a lot about the chemosensitivity of the tumor. These markers should be tested at initial, di initial diagnosis, so from the tumor tissue you get from, from the first operation. There are issues with the methods you should use. In some cases uh, there's uh, not a consensus on what is the best method to use. For example, uh, with MGMT testing you have to be very careful what method you use because there are technical challenges and uh, some of the methods have not an optimal reproducibility. Most studies so far have used uh, methylation-specific PCR but there are also other methods around, for example, pyrosequencing, MLPA and so on. Also some multiplex arrays like 450K uh, assays are being used in some centers for uh, assessment of MGMT promoter methylation status. But no matter what uh, technique you use, you have to take uh, uh, really good care that you use um, very strict quality control to exclude false positive or false negative cases. And I would argue that uh, this test should only be performed in experienced laboratories. So I think uh, this uh, kind of test should be centralized to specialized centers. For 1P19Q, most uh, centers use uh, FISH analysis. FISH stands for fluorescent in situ hybridization. This is a fairly well established method, but there's also another method called LOH analysis, which is also used by some centers. Also here, uh, you need a good quality control. But for IDH mutation status, um, I would propose a sequential algorithm of, te of testing. Um, there's an antibody which labels the aberrant uh, protein of the most common mutation. The mutation is called IDH132H. So you can do immunohistochemistry. If it's negative, you should probably go for genetic sequencing to uh, exclude a rare mutation form. So there's a number of uh, other markers which are under intensive research in, in glioma. Um, one uh, interesting field is, of course, uh, the issue of uh, targets for immune modulating drugs. There are several uh, specific mutations which uh, have the potential to be targeted effectively by, by vaccination strategies, for example, uh, like EGFR V3 mutation or IDH mutation. Um, and also we see a lot of expression of uh, immune checkpoint uh, molecules in glioblastoma. Another important field is the identification of predictive markers uh, with, uh, with drugs we tested in recent phase 3 uh, studies. There seems to be uh, patients uh, who respond better or worse than the average uh, to anti-angiogenic drugs and this may be related to genetic signatures. Then uh, as another point, uh, some rare mutations uh, have the potential to be effectively targeted by, uh, by tyrosine kinase inhibitors. For example, BRAF mutations, for which we have uh, uh, effective drugs in other tumor types, also occur in both primary and secondary brain tumors. And uh, I think there's also potential for, for effective treatment. Looking back at the last few years, we had uh, some disappointments in neuro-oncology, frankly, um, because some of the targeted agents we tested, or most of the targeted agents we tested actually, um, uh, showed negative results. At the moment, a uh, lot of investigation is ongoing uh, in, in uh, immune modulating agents, immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, as also in other tumor types. Um, glioblastoma has long been known for a strong and prominent immunosuppressive activity, and we see um, that immune checkpoint uh, molecules like PDL1, for example, is highly expressed in glioblastoma in many cases of glioblastoma. 
So uh, we will see whether uh, targeting uh, these uh, molecules uh, may be of, of therapeutic relevance and uh, studies are being set up at the moment. There's a large number of primary brain tumors in the WHO classification. Uh, over 120 entities are listed and there's a lot of research ongoing in, 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 in these different tumor types. At the moment there is a focus on uh, multiplex arrays, for example looking at epigenetic alterations um, and we're trying to, to classify brain tumors by, by these aberrations. Um, this may help to, to reclassify actually some tumors. So far we have been classifying tumors based on their histological appearance. Um, but we see that in some cases this is not uh, enough information and molecular information may help to, to better subdivide tumor types and also to, to provide more information on the prognosis. Mm -hmm.